Hi everyone, I'm Tom from Arturia Distributor Source Distribution and I am joined with James Hannington, fastest fingers in the north. And we are here to show you a brand new product from Arturia. This is the Astro Lab. Now, Astrolab is a brand new type of instrument for Arturia. It is effectively all of their software instruments in a hardware performance keyboard. When I showed you this initially in the shop about an hour ago, you were immediately surprised by it. Yeah. It's quite a different angle for those guys. I mean, something that I do, and I know a lot of other people do, is for live gigs, I've got a Arturia Key Lab linked up to Analog Lab on my laptop, and I'm always worried that my laptop's not going to be able to handle all that kind of power, and it's just going to crash on me and die. Whereas if it's all just in a box, you haven't got that problem. You can just set up and go with no, with Absolutely. no worries. Absolutely. So that's that's the big the big stick with this keyboard is the integration with Analog Lab, and you know as an Analog Lab user that navigating presets, finding sounds, tweaking sounds is absolutely... It's a breeze. Bre it's an absolute yeah. breeze, build building set lists, all that kind of stuff, super, super nice, but there's always that slight concern, as you say, when you take that set up out, you're like, mm, am I going to get a Skype notification yeah. mid-set, <laughs> that kind of thing, which has actually happened to me before. Um, so this is what Astrolab has been designed to kind of... Uh, solve so let's just have a quick look through the user interface so it's a uh, stage piano limited controls so you've got everything that you'd uh, kind of expect from um, kind of astro uh, from analog lab so you've got like the same brightness timbre time mo movement controls effect settings all that kind of stuff but then you've also got this lovely scroll wheel as well you can maybe hear that clicking maybe not it's got like a nice kind of uh, like a like a relay kind yeah. of sound to it uh, and this is where you do a lot of your navigating. So this has got like a kind of uh, click to it, so you can find your sounds that way, that kind of stuff. Uh, and also kind of uh, up and down keys as well, should you not want to use the jog wheel. But also, uh, for ease of use, you've got all your different kind of categories down there as well, and easy kind of performance macros. So as I mentioned, like all the, the kind of macros that you find in Analog Lab, they're replicated one-on-one -on, -one on here as well. It's worth noting that anything you do in Analog Lab, including editing a preset beyond its normal settings and saving that preset, will also automatically come up in here. And things like playlists as well, you can do all that in yep. here as well? Absolutely, yeah. So everything that you're already doing in your world yep. can be done in here. And if we just go through some of the sounds, you can have a little play. I'm sure you've got some of your favourite presets, surely, that you remember off the top of your Absolutely, head. Absolutely, yeah definitely have haven't you absolutely yeah. <laughs> so uh, i was going to mention in terms of like favoriting presets as well if you find something in here or again find something in analog lab that you want to favorite favorite favorites here favorites are there seamless the whole thing is absolutely seamless so yeah i think we should just have a listen to a couple of the sounds um i think if we start with a piano that's a good place to yeah start. yeah so sounds good if you have a little tinkle and then I'll, I'll kind of explain kind of the uh the architecture of the thing as well so yeah okay brilliant yeah, i'll just move up here yeah sure Keybed's really nice. Different to everything else they've done. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like the um, the key lab. So it's like a, it's waterfall, and it's sort of like a, a, semi weighted. Yeah, it's an of. interesting weight to it. It's not like anything else I've really played before. Obviously, no. you know, stage pianos. People are familiar with that sort of feel of you know other stage piano brands. So I think they've really nailed the touch on this one. It's yeah. it works really well for both pianos. And for the Simps as well. It's got that w weight, it's weighty enough for the feel, but yeah. light enough for, you know, faster stuff, you know. Nice and responsive as well. So I didn't know if you knew uh, this about Piano V, it's not samples. It's all, no. it's all physical modelling. 
So that's something with Astrolab that's quite unique. So unlike other stage pianos and performance keyboards, all of the synthesis and like kind of uh, piano sounds are all done using physical modeling. When you're playing with the synth, you're not playing with a sample, you're actually playing with the DSP. Yeah. So the uh, the end result is something that actually is A, way more flexible, and B, sounds absolutely fantastic. So yeah, that's uh, that's American Grand from Piano V. So you've got, uh, let's just have a little play with the macro controls. So if you play with the brightness, so we can kind of get yeah. an idea of uh, what that's doing to the sound. Oh, that's nice. Got effect sends over here as well, haven't you? Yeah, so you've got four effect slots as well. It's your next lo fi hip hop beat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you can edit the effects. Yeah, here. you can edit, edit the, you can turn them off dynamically, you can edit them. So uh, I'm not sure how good it's going to come through the top down, but we'll show you the, uh, the, the list of uh, different effects. So you've got stuff from effects collection uh, and then some special effects in here as well, like um, different types of like rotaries and that kind of stuff as well. Um, so you can edit the effects. Of course, everything you do on uh, Analog Lab, which we'll show uh, in, a, in a separate section in a moment, um, also comes on here as well. So you can turn the effects off with the switches. So you've got one, two, three, four, and then you've also got further editing as well for them. Um, should we have a little listen to maybe the electric pianos, the organs, and then we can yeah. get some of the... Uh... So it's just a sort of... Oh, yeah. So once you're in a category... You've got your up and downs or your left and rights to go between the different presets. An electric piano includes uh, some of the DX stuff, clavinet as well. Yeah, so this preset I've selected here is actually it's a split. So it's half of a DX7, half of a half of a Rhodes, and you'll notice that these split buttons have now changed colour. Oh, yeah. So when you press this one, that's the things you're editing for part one, and that's the things that you're editing for part two. It's really clever where you can press uh, two together and then you can edit them together. So have a little listen to this one. So that's an actual proper. It's that real kind of 80s. Yeah, that real kind of, what's that Phil Collins song that starts with that kind of sound? I don't know how it goes. Oh, don't challenge my music knowledge on camera. <laughs> oh. Yeah, lovely. Super cool. Should we get on to something that you might more associate with Arturia? Yeah. So I am looking at this button. <laughs> <laughs> so the first pad sound is this sci-fi strings, which is the uh, Jupiter 8 um, model. So this, I have lived on this preset for a couple of weeks. I absolutely <laughs> adore it. Yeah. And the modulation we will do Depends what it's assigned to on the preset. Right, okay. So you can that's assign all done it, in... All done in Analog, in Analog Lab. Lab. It's worth noting that when this comes out, there will be an iOS companion app, uh, which means you can plug it in by USB-C or connect it by Bluetooth, plonk your phone there, and then you've got further editing. It's a nice sounds. handy space, iPad-shaped space. It, exactly, right, <laughs> exactly. But we should probably just mention the connectivity quickly. So you've got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Um, you've also got a MIDI host port. So if you wanted to have, as you said earlier, like your drawbars for your Hammond, yeah. you could totally have, I don't know if anyone makes a set of drawbars that big. It's the Ferrofish one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you could have something like that in there to, to do that or you know like a beat step pro for extra knobs and faders that kind of stuff because it's designed to be so a sound box yeah. you know you want to get to the sound quickly and have kind of limited controls but if you do want to dig in like I say you can have the iOS app or uh, analog lab there or like a little knobby box of <laughs> some yeah. description that you can do stuff with and you can link other keyboards to it as well so you can have a dual manual yeah you totally can yeah. yeah you totally can fantastic yeah, yeah. Um, should we have a listen to some more pad sounds? Yeah, go on. If we go, uh, there's a, a crystal pad. This is great. This is really cool. Is this Aphex Twin? Basically, yeah. Yeah. 
basically cut off from resonance, more or less. Isn't yeah, it? more or less, yeah. But that does depend on the does depend on the preset you're using. What yeah, those, of course. What those macro to. So I think this is the SQ80. I think it is the Insonic uh, SQ80. DX7, it looks like. Is that a DX7? Yeah. I can't see from this angle. Forgive me. <laughs> forgive me. Um, so yeah, if we just drop onto another pad sound. So they've got the augmented stuff in here as oh, well. Oh yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, this is a new range of uh, software instruments that Arturia developed that augment, hence the name, physical things such as strings with synthesis. So there's augmented uh, strings, augmented voices, and augmented brass. Uh, and piano and, and woodwinds. Oh, yeah, yeah, and piano and woodwinds as well. So that's all in here as well. Um, so you really have got, aside from the more traditional instruments like pianos and organs, that kind of stuff, you really have got the depth of that old Churia catalogue in there as well, so. That real kind of hand Zimmer. Oh, it's all got super cinematic. Yeah. So there's samples and, and synthesis working yes. at the same time. Yes. It's worth mentioning that there are some instruments that are sample based as well, so. This one here is sample based. Um, okay. So yeah, there there are things that can't be achieved within Analog Lab that can only be achieved with kind of sample playback. But that's a nice sound, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah, super nice. That's a preset on the Mellotron, isn't it? And the in V collection. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. So if we go, should we go for like some leads, maybe? Yeah, let's go for go it. Go for leads. I have yeah. no idea what that one is. I mean, I know what that synth is, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, seventies. Oh. Yeah. And polyphonic because it's a Juno. to stop now otherwise you get a copyright strike <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's that's the kind of sound you're getting in that so it's it's kind of covering everything from like i say your traditional instruments through to your simps and it's the kind of core concept uh, aside from getting away from having to take the computer out is oh my god i i own a juno and yeah. i don't want to take my juno to the gig i'll get one of these so my juno is at home nice and safe and it's like oh it's also got a mini mode it's also got this 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 and this in it as well so for for someone like me that doesn't want to take their nice, expensive, mega expensive simps out of very brittle simps as well out on the road, I can get all of those sounds straight in here really easily. So yeah, should we have a listen to, so there's um, this one, sequences. So this yeah. is like rhythmic stuff. Um, so there's uh, a whole smorgasbord of different stuff in here. There's some of like the uh, Emulator X drums and that kind of stuff in there as well. So have a little play through some of those presets. Good time to talk about the ARP. Yeah, <laughs> so let's go for it. We've not talked about these two buttons, but we'll uh, we'll do that super quickly. So there's an ARP in here. Um, you can edit it uh, by doing a long press of the button. So you can turn the ARP on. You can set the hold on, and then you can set the type of the ARP, the octave range, the rate, all that kind of stuff that you'd normally expect. But you can also split which part is getting the ARP and which part isn't. So if you're running oh, a two-part sound, you could have that kind of. RP mini moog that you just had with some pads at the other end if you wanted to and the pads not being arped so that's a really really nice feature um, and then the called mode for someone like myself that is awful at playing keys this is an absolute godsend so you can force it to scale you can select the scale type there's lots of different ones 
I like C minor because I just do. Um, and then you've got like different types. Of, uh, you can also assign the scale to the parts as well, which is quite cool. So, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have something in a totally arbitrary scale to a different part if you want. It's Yeah. I, I haven't gone quite down that rabbit hole yet, but I think I'm, uh, I'm going to be because uh, I quite like forcing two in harmonic scales together and like enjoying the dissonance that you get between them so i'm looking forward to having to play with that but yeah super useful features uh, for someone like myself that does play keyboards live but also can't play <laughs> keyboards live so uh, yeah i use that scale feature an awful awful lot so yeah uh, i think we should just have a couple more sounds what haven't we uh, what haven't we had to play with yet we haven't had any bass buttery biscuit bass <laughs> That's lovely, that. <laughs> Straight into a pleasing sound. Make a little oh. kick drum. That got like really super plucky. I mean, I I know how good the sounds are because of analog you lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I also own an MS-20, and that just sounds just like it is. They are that good. I mean, credit to the amazing people at Arturia. They, they know how to model a filter. They really, really Oh, yeah, know. if they know anything, yeah. it's how to model a filter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a particular fun, uh, fan of that... Um, that particular sound you're using purely because it, it highlights the resonant quality of that so well. DX Jacko bass. Can you play Portrait of Tracy on keys? No, no one can. Not on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. I can hear bass players around the world crying. Yeah. <laughs> a fretless bass it is not, but a good sound it is. <laughs> that is a good sound. So let's have another listen to maybe one of the split bass sounds. We've got this E yeah. bass and Rose EP. So what is that? Used? I can't see it from this angle, unfortunately. Oh, so the, the lights up here, that shows you where the split That's point the split is. point, yeah. yeah. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Yeah. And then you've got... Yeah. <laughs> so you can really kind of, you know... Yeah, fantastic. I should probably show you a little bit of the navigation very quickly. So okay. you can actually navigate um, by instrument. So say if you just want to get all the, for me, my, one of my favourite things is pigments. So you want to get the pigment sounds. This is now all the pigment sounds. So we're just specifically in a, uh, in a pigments bank now. So if it, that sound... Piano with with pigments, which is quite cool. Uh, so if we go to this is another hybrid as well. So there's a lot of hybrid sounds. So that's another Ooh, pigment sound. Yeah. Super big organ. Huge. Yeah, huge. Uh, so, yeah, you can browse by um, sound, uh, browse by instrument, rather. You can also, uh, obviously, browse by the types, which are along here. But then you've also got artists, so you can find your favourite sound designer's presets. Obviously, if you save yeah. your own sounds, you can get to your own sounds. You can browse the liked presets. Uh, also, different sound banks and all your playlists as well. So, yeah, it's a very easy system to navigate i mean if you've ever used any modern smartphone you'll figure it out in about yeah. three seconds the ui is very very clean uh, and, uh, and as i mentioned earlier it is specifically designed to get to those sounds quickly yeah. and the integration is absolutely seamless you know you can be in a studio making a sound you get right into it you're like right i want to take that out live click it's in there that quick brilliant yeah. yeah. Um, so we have got uh, Analog Lab Pro uh, set up with the Astro Lab. Uh, we're just going to do a, a quick talk through uh, the kind of ecosystem features. So how Analog Lab 
talks to Astrolab. So James, as a, as a user of Analog Lab, uh, hopefully everything I say here is going to make complete sense to you. Um, effectively, uh, for, for those of you that are not aware of what Analog Lab is, and I'm sure James, you can embellish this description. This is where all of the presets for the instruments within V Collection are sort of combined and condensed down for easy navigation. Yeah. Uh, for building kind of uh, playlists, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's great for kind of just having one hub where you can have all your sounds that you can easily scroll through, but then go into the, the individual instruments and edit those in more detail there. Yeah. It's kind of an all-in-one Artoria software package. It's it's worth saying that you don't need V Collection to use Analog Lab no. Pro at all. They are two totally different packages. It's, it's worth saying, however, though, that if you do want to edit the sounds beyond what the uh, kind of preset values are given, you do need the equivalent yeah. uh, instrument to be able to do that. So you'll notice on this version of uh, Analog Lab here, Analog Lab Pro, we've got this little link to Astrolab tab. So when that's engaged, anything that I do here happens on the instrument as well and vice versa. So if I was to, you know, say go into a pad sound, so if we go into the banks and Astral Voices, if I was to favorite this, that would then appear in my favorites on the machine as well. If I was to go in and edit the preset and play with it a little bit more, play with the effects, that kind of stuff, and then again, save it, also appears on here and vice versa. Brilliant, well. and that works for loading, um, creating playlists and set lists and things like that. That's all... Absolutely. Yeah. So as someone that plays with this quite a bit, just for the kind of songwriting process, it's like, get me to a sound now. Yeah. It means that I can get to that sound record it, get it down, and then embellish it later, you know, embellish the performance or play with the macros or whatever I wanted to do afterwards. So it really is a super symbiotic thing that is, it goes beyond just that sort of MIDI controller and computer world. It's it's the whole sort of ecosystem of studio stage and live and sound design as well, because you can really dig in with this and then you can really perform with this as well. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the ecosystem. Fantastic. Yeah, cool, huh? So uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you want to find out more about the Arturia Astrolab, uh, check out some links below or go to the Gear for Music website. I have been Tom. I've been James. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>